Hello boys and girls, how are you? Did you have a good week? Welcome to another lesson study. It's lesson number nine and it's called Spreading the Word. Are you excited to begin the lesson study? Great, let us bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, we are so happy for this time in your presence. We praise you for your love and thank you for your protection and many provisions during this week. We ask that you forgive us for our sins and help us to know you better from this lesson review. We ask your blessings on all those who are listening to this program. And please send the Holy Spirit to guide our thoughts and in everything we do today is my prayer in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Let us now say our message and memory verse. Then we will glorify God's name in song. Our message is, God sends us as messengers of his grace. Let us say it again. God sends us as messengers of his grace. Our memory verse is, The Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Acts chapter 13 verse 2. mission story time are you ready for the mission story do you have your mission offering there are lots of different ways of communicating telephone email tv radio 
just to name a few. The best way of communication is when we see face to face. When we give our offerings, we invest in different ways of communicating the gospel to those around us. Let us listen to the mission story, then our lesson study. A missionary family packed their bags and prepared for a new adventure in Albania. God called Delmar, Nati, and three-year-old Clara to serve in the 1040 window. We are both from Brazil. I think God placed in our hearts the desire to serve in a different place, in a different environment, in a place where we wouldn't be like comfortable, something that will challenge both our ministries. And we realized very soon some of the challenges that we will face preaching and the gospel, bringing the gospel here to this country. For years, Albania was a communist territory, banning religion and declaring it the world's first and only atheist state. Communism collapsed in 1990, but even today, religion doesn't seem to be a priority for most people. There are only about 120 Adventists out of nearly 3 million people living in Albania. Delmar, Nati, and Clara were assigned to serve in the city of Korcha at the country's first Adventist church built in 1994. The first year was especially difficult. Despite their efforts, there wasn't a single baptism or anyone interested in Bible studies. In the end of my first year, I was really discouraged because I couldn't see anything really big happening in the church. You know, I couldn't see anything really even changing in the church. We associate big things with good numbers, big numbers. So in my first year, I was trying to do my best. I was working a lot to do something big or something important according to my understanding. At the peak of Del Mar's frustration, he received a call to pastor a large church in Brazil. This offer seemed to come at the perfect time, and he shared the exciting news with his wife. I came and talked to my wife. You know, we got a call to go back to Brazil. What do you think? We're not doing anything here anyway. Why we don't accept that and we just leave? And that's it. She looked to me. She said, do you think that we did everything that we could here in Albania? Do you, do you really think that it's time for us to leave this place? She said, I personally think that we should stay, that the Lord has something prepared for us here. And maybe He wants to, to teach us something here and he, he still wants to use us. So they declined the opportunity in Brazil and prayed about how God could use them in this challenging part of the world. Delmar and Nati noticed that there were a lot of kids in their neighborhood. Maybe this was a good place to start. And then we also realized that Clara could be a good missionary to them. Because every time that uh, we were coming to our home or leaving our home, and the kids, they saw Clara. So they start saying, hey, Clara, Clara, let's play, let's do this, let's do that. We prepare like a, a place to play volleyball. And then we say to them, come, let's play together. And, and this just happened naturally. And the kids start coming to church and they start coming every week to church, like two times a week, playing volleyball, playing with us. And in a few weeks, they knew me as a pastor, they knew Nati, they knew very well Clara. And we were so excited because now the church was full. They recruited help in the form of two Adventist volunteers from Brazil and community volunteers. One of the members, Angela, brought her friend Fation to church with her every few months. Fatio and I, we just connect as a friend and we start talking about God. We start studying the Bible together. I invite him to be part of our group and he just was excited. He was really engaged with us and he said, you know, that's what I want. I want to participate. I want to help these kids. I want to serve this community. And in just a few weeks, he was already helping us with the kids and the kids also loved him. All these activities just brought us together and I had the privilege to baptize Fation as my first baptism here in Albania. And I was so happy to see that the Lord was answering to our prayers. The love of Jesus touched Fation's heart and he now shares this with others. When we follow this Jesus method in other peoples in the community, 
I pray for the hearts to get warm and, and to follow Jesus. This church has seen many new faces in the past few months. Church members are connecting with the community through a global mission urban center of influence. Nati uses her gift of music to teach classes to the kids. They love learning to play the violin. The center also offers language courses and a health club with plans to branch out with more programs. So when you try something new and then you see that it's working, it already gives you like more hope. And then this also gives us motivation to try different things, not just not one approach. Please pray for this ministry as it continues to grow and integrate into the community. And pray for missionary families like Delmar, Nati and Clara, who are serving on the front lines of mission. When we were called to come as a missionary, I thought that I was ready to change the world. But it took maybe one year to realize that before I do anything, the Lord was trying to change me. Thank you for supporting the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. <laughs> okay, so you like to live in Albania? Yes. Sí? Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Spreading the Word. The memory verse is from Acts chapter 13, verse 2. It says, The Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Today's message is God sends us as messengers of His grace. Have you ever been on a long trip? How did you travel? Paul and Barnabas were sent on a special trip, a trip to tell others of God's grace. But not everyone was happy as they preached. Paul and Barnabas had worked together in Antioch for a year. They kept busy teaching, preaching, and helping people, and the church in Antioch grew and grew. One day, some of the members were fasting and praying. They were asking God to guide them, to tell them what He wanted them to do. While they were praying, the Holy Spirit spoke to them. He said, I have called Paul and Barnabas to do a special work for me. Place your hands on them. Then pray for them and send them off to tell the good news in other places. Everyone was sad when they heard that Paul and Barnabas were going away. But they also wanted others to hear about Jesus. So the Antioch believers fasted and prayed. Then they gathered for a special prayer meeting. The elders in the church laid hands on Paul and Barnabas and prayed for them. Then they sent them on their way. Paul and Barnabas took a young man, John Mark, with them. He would learn from them and help them in their work. The three of them caught a boat at the port of Salamis and sailed to Cyprus. They traveled across the island stopping at all the Jewish synagogues and teaching everyone who would listen. Soon they moved on to Papos, on the other side of the island. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet called Bar-Jesus, or Illumis. He was an important man and one of the Roman proconsuls, or the governor's, attendants. Cyprus was not a huge island, so the news of strangers traveled fast. The proconsul soon heard about Paul and his companions. He was curious to hear the word of God. Alumus was not happy about that at all. He was afraid that he would lose his influence with the proconsul. So he tried to turn the proconsul against Paul and his friends. But the Holy Spirit showed Paul what was happening. 
Suddenly, Paul turned and looked directly at Elumas. "You are a child of the devil," he said. "You are an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of tricks and ways to fool people. You will never stop trying to put roadblocks in the way of the Lord. Because of your actions, you will be blind for a while." You will not be able to see the light of the sun. Immediately, Elumas felt a dark mist rolling in front of his eyes. He blinked. He rubbed his eyes. He tried to push it away. Everything got darker and darker. Elumas was blind. He could not see a thing. He began to reach out a hand for someone to guide him, so he did not fall. The proconsul was amazed. One moment Elumas could see, the next moment he was blind. This convinced the proconsul that Paul was teaching the truth. He listened and learned, and he soon believed in God. Paul, Barnabas, and John Mark traveled on to many other places. Everywhere they went, they told everyone the good news. God's grace is free and available to everyone. We can be like Paul and his friends. We too can tell people we meet about God's wonderful love and grace. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy Fullwood for GraceLink.net. Animation and artwork by Giorgio Godoy. Audio is post-produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso in Singapore. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. The audio engineer was Maurice Bailey. What did you learn from the mission story? In your own words, tell mommy and daddy the story. Now I have questions for you from the lesson study. Give your parents the answers. They are number one: What did Paul and Barnabas do when they got to Cyprus? Two: Who tried to stop them and why? Three: What did the proconsul think when Elymas became blind? God wants us to carry the same message today. Let us remember what our message says. Say it with me as well as the memory verse. Our message is: God sends us as messengers of His grace. Let us say it again: God sends us as messengers of His grace. Our memory verse is: The Holy Spirit said, "Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them." Acts chapter thirteen verse two. How could you be a messenger of grace in this situation? It is not your turn to do the dishes. They are in the kitchen sink. Your mom is helping your dad. There are lots of pans to wash, and you hate washing pans. How can you be a messenger of grace? Number two. The teacher is out of the room. Everyone is talking and making noise. The teacher has asked you to work quietly on your papers. How can you be a messenger of grace? It is not always easy to be a messenger of grace. When we are faced with difficult situations or choices, what can we be sure of? Yes, we can be sure that God's grace is big enough to help us deal with the situation and help us to spread His grace to others. Let us say our message. God sends us as messenger of His grace and our memory verse together. Then we will hear something special from Grandpa Harvey. After which we will sing our closing song. Our message is: God sends us as messengers of His grace. Let us say it again: God sends us as messengers of His grace. Our memory verse is: The Holy Spirit said. Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Acts chapter thirteen, verse two. Hello, boys and girls. Grandpa Harvey here. I'm glad that you could join us once again. 
boys and girls, when you read in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. That's right, boys and girls. But, but, how do we seek? How do we do that? Let me tell you. You can seek by reading the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Reading God's Word every day. Morning, afternoon, evening, any time. Read His Word. Also, by praying. That's right, boys and girls. By praying to our Heavenly Father. As soon as you wake up, say a prayer. Whenever you can during the day, say a prayer. That's how you talk to God. Oh, oh, you can also have worship with your family. If they forget, remind them, Mommy, Daddy, time to pray. All this helps you seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Boys and girls, remember that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Let's sing that song, Seek Ye First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. and girls seek God's kingdom. Bye bye.
boys and girls, we have come to the end of this week's lesson study. Let us shout out our lesson study after two. One, two. Spreading the word. Our message is... God sends us as messengers of His grace. And our memory verse, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Acts chapter 13 verse 2. Today, we are going to write a letter to God. You can thank Him for all the good things He has given you and tell Him about anything that worries you. If you want, you can draw the different things. Put all of your letters in a large envelope, seal it, pray over it, and ask God to hear and answer the prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all the good things you have given us. Thank you for our family and friends, food, clothing, and most of all, your love and your son who came to earth to die for our sins. Father, help each child to show your grace to others this week. Lord, you know about the worries before them. Many of the children are worried about catching coronavirus, about getting sick. Many are worried about their parents, maybe out of a job. Or they may be worrying about how the money will come to pay for their school fees. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you take care of all these worries. Throw them in the depths of the sea and give peace to the boys and girls, moms and dads, who are worrying and provide for their every need. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, boys and girls. Keep shining for Jesus. Remember, God sends us as messengers of His grace. Jesus loves you.